Precision Measurement for Machinists, a Master Task Multimedia Program. Lesson 7, Measuring Surface Finish. The surface of a workpiece feature is the boundary which separates the feature from another object, substance, or space. Surface finish, sometimes called surface texture, refers to the roughness or smoothness of a machine surface. Machine surfaces can be rough, like this surface, or smooth, like this one. Working surfaces, which are surfaces that are required to mate with other surfaces, usually require a more precise finish. The quality of a surface finish is determined by the use of cutting tools and the actions they perform upon a surface. Surface finish is specified on prints and will be a quality attribute which must be measured. There will be five parts to this lesson. Part 1 will discuss the characteristics of surface finish. Units of measure for surface finish will be covered in Part 2. Part 3 explains comparison gauges. Part 4 covers the use of analog and digital profilometers. And Part 5 will introduce the portable surface roughness gauge. Part 1. Characteristics of Surface Finish When you look at and feel the surface of any given workpiece, you can get some idea how rough the finish is. No matter how rough or smooth a surface finish is, there are four characteristics that may need to be measured and compared to a tolerance on the print. They are roughness, waviness, lay, and flaws. Roughness is basically tool marks left on the surface by the cutting edge of the tool. It consists of small irregularities in the surface finish and is a natural result of the cutting operation. Roughness cannot be avoided, but can be adjusted by changing feeds and speeds or using a different type or style of tool. Waviness is similar to roughness, but more widely spaced. One way to see the relationship between roughness and waviness is to look at the ocean. Think of the larger swells as waviness, and think of the smaller waves as roughness. Waviness, like roughness, results from the forces applied between the tool and workpiece during machining. When these forces interact, movement of the tool or workpiece can occur. The rigidity of the tool and spindle, and the ability of the fixture to hold the workpiece, help to reduce this movement to an acceptable level. The measurement of surface finish can determine if this acceptable level has been achieved. Lay is the direction of the surface pattern, determined by the method of production. In this example, you can see that the direction of lay is perpendicular to the patterns of roughness and waviness. Roughness, waviness, and lay are all characteristics of surface finish that are relatively consistent and have a pattern. These characteristics can be followed and predicted on the surface of a workpiece. A flaw is an irregularity that occurs on the surface finish at random without any kind of pattern or predictability. Some examples of flaws are cracks, holes, ridges, and scratches. Part 2. Units of Measure for Surface Finish If we took a thin slice out of the center of this workpiece, and viewed it from the side, we would see its profile. Measurements of surface roughness and waviness are done by measuring a profile. This straight line represents the nominal profile of a surface. It is the surface's intended profile without any variation. This is a theoretical surface and is only used as a reference from which we can judge the amount of variation in the actual surface. Notice that the profile is measured across the lay pattern. The measured profile is obtained by the use of instruments, such as a profilometer. Instead of taking a slice out of the workpiece, the profilometer has a needle point, called a stylus, which is moved across the surface to measure the profile. As you learned in previous lessons, one of the key units of measurement in the machining industry is the thousandth of an inch. Surface finish is measured in micro-inches. A micro-inch is one millionth of an inch. In order to grasp the actual size of a micro-inch, think of one micro-inch as one-thousandth of one-thousandth of an inch. Micro-inches commonly use this abbreviation. For example, this value is read 63 micro-inches. This value could also have been written 0 .000063 inches. Micro-inches are written as whole numbers to conserve space on a print. 
When measuring surfaces using micro inches, irregularities can be detected even in the smoothest surface finish. Smaller micro inch values indicate smoother surfaces while larger values indicate rougher surfaces. When measuring surface finish using the metric system, values will be stated in microns. Microns are normally abbreviated with this symbol. This value is read as 3 and 2 tenths microns. Roughness and waviness both have two main properties, peaks and valleys. The peaks are the highest points in the profile of the surface, while the valleys are the lowest points. The common method of judging surface finish is measuring the roughness average, abbreviated RA. Older standards may refer to roughness average as arithmetic average, abbreviated AA. RA is calculated by the profilometer. It is the average roughness of the surface area over which the profilometer travels. When reading surface finish requirements on a print, you will notice that they are noted differently than other measurements. First, this is the symbol for surface finish. It is similar to a check mark. The surface finish symbol is normally connected to an extension line of the surface it refers to or has a leader line pointing from the symbol to the surface. Components of the surface finish symbol include the average roughness value, the waviness value, and the lay symbol. Notice when the waviness value is added, a horizontal line is drawn across the top of the symbol which the value is written. Sometimes you will see a horizontal line closing the bottom of the symbol into a triangle. This means that material needs to be removed by machining to produce the finish. If there is a small circle there instead, no material may be removed from this feature. This means that the surface must be provided by the initial casting or forging process. Not all of these components are used on every print. In fact, on many prints, average roughness will be the only measurement noted for the required surface finish. The average roughness value is typically stated in micro inches. In this example, 63 means 63 micro inches. The waviness value is stated in thousandths of an inch. Here you see a waviness value of 0 .005, which means five thousandths of an inch. Notice that there is only one numerical value for average roughness and one value for waviness. In this example, any average roughness value less than or equal to 63 micro inches is acceptable, and any waviness value less than or equal to 5 thousandths is also acceptable. Sometimes the waviness value is followed by a hyphen and another number. This is the maximum waviness spacing rating and is specified in inches. In our current example, this means that the length from one waviness peak to the next must be less than two inches. In this example, however, you see two values in the roughness average area of the symbol. The top value is one and six tenths microns, and the bottom value is eight tenths of a micron. These are the tolerance limits for average roughness, stating that it must fall between eight tenths and one and six tenths microns. On older prints, you will sometimes find the letter N followed by a number between 1 and 12 in the RA area. This is a roughness grade number and refers to both a microinch and micron value. For example, N7 means this surface must have a roughness average of 63 microinches or 1 and 6 tenths microns. The next component is the lay symbol. The lay symbol indicates the pattern and direction of lay. To the right of the lay symbol, you may find the roughness spacing value. Here, the distance from one roughness peak to the next must be no greater than 20 thousandths. You will find a job aid at the end of Lesson 7 in your student guide that will identify the different components that may appear with the surface finish symbol, as well as describe the seven different lay patterns. Part 3. Comparison Gauges. The comparison gauge is a scale that contains a number of different surface samples where the roughness value of each is listed. Comparison gauges rely mainly on the ability of the operator to feel the texture of the surface. Close estimates of a surface finish can be made using a comparison gauge, but actual measurements require a profilometer. The operator uses a probe or fingertip to touch the finished surface of the part and compare it to the surface on the gauge. 
Finding the closest match depends on the operator's ability to feel the differences. To use the gauge, the operator must determine what method of machining was used to provide the surface finish for the workpiece. Most comparison gauges will have several different machining operation samples, including milling, turning, and grinding. In this example, the surface finish of the workpiece was provided by vertical milling. A reading is taken by rubbing a probe or stylus on several vertical milling gauge samples and then on the workpiece. When a sample on the comparison gauge feels the most like the surface of the workpiece, the RA value can be read for that sample. Notice that there are two sets of numbers. One set is inch, the other is metric. The inch column gives finish readings in micro inches, and the metric column gives finish readings in microns. If this vertical milling sample is the one that feels most like the surface being checked, we see that the roughness average is approximately 63 micro inches, or 1 and 6 tenths microns. Also, note the N7 roughness grade number on the other side of the gauge, which refers to both 63 micro inches and 1 and 6 tenths microns. Even though this gauge can be used to sample surfaces with finishes as smooth as 2 micro inches, it can be difficult to get an accurate reading of the finish by feel using the comparison gauge because the surface is extremely smooth. When measuring surfaces requiring a finish of less than 63 micro inches or 1 and 6 tenths microns, you will in most cases need to use a profilometer. Part 4 Analog and Digital Profilometers a profilometer is typically an electronic device that is used to measure the profile of a surface in micro inches. In the following examples, we will look at two types of profilometers, analog and digital. The analog profilometer has two main components, the control center and the probe. The control center displays data acquired by the probe. It contains an amplifier that analyzes the movements of the probe and then displays results so they are visible to the operator. On this profilometer, the data is displayed on this meter. Note the two dials to the right of the meter. The dial on the left is labeled cutoff and is set at 30 thousandths. While the stroke determines the length of the area that the probe will travel, cutoff refers to the sampling length from which roughness average is calculated. As you know from basic math, an average is calculated by adding up a group of numbers and dividing by the number of values in the group. The size of the cutoff determines how many segments the stroke length will be divided into. For example, if the stroke length is 210 thousandths and the cutoff were 30 thousandths, there will be seven cutoffs. The roughness within each cutoff is assigned a value. These values are then averaged to produce the RA value. A larger cutoff will include more irregularities, such as waviness, while a smaller cutoff may omit waviness from the results. At least five cutoffs are required within a stroke to determine roughness average. If the stroke length is less than five times the cutoff value, you will still obtain a result, but it will not be actual roughness average. A larger stroke can be used if there is a large enough surface area. This will provide more cutoffs from which roughness average is found. When noted on a part print, the cutoff value will be found just below the horizontal line of the surface finish symbol. If cutoff is not noted on the print, it should be set to 30 thousandths. In most cases, 30 thousandths of cutoff will be enough to include all surface irregularities. If not noted on a metric print, the cutoff value is always 8 tenths of a millimeter. If a surface is too small to allow an adequate stroke, a smaller cutoff must be used to obtain enough samples to calculate roughness average. If you are unsure of the cutoff value you should be using, or if you suspect the cutoff value is set incorrectly, check with your supervisor regarding proper procedure. The dial on the right selects the range and scale used by the meter. If the range dial is set to 10, the bottom scale is used and each graduation represents one-half micro-inch. For example, the 2 on the lower scale would indicate 2 micro-inches. If the dial were set at 30, the top scale would be used, and each graduation would represent 1 micro-inch, meaning the 10 on the upper scale would indicate 10 micro-inches. 
If 100 were selected on the dial, then the lower scale would be used. Only this time, each graduation would represent 5 micro inches. So in this case, the 2 on the lower scale would indicate 20 micro inches. And if 300 were selected, the top scale would be used, and each graduation would represent 10 micro inches, meaning the 10 on the upper scale indicates 100 micro inches. Notice that this range selector dial also has metric settings, so that surface finish can also be measured in microns. Now, let's take a measurement. First, place the part you're going to measure in a holding device, in this case, a magnetic V-block. Make sure both the block and the part are clean and free of dirt, assuring that the workpiece surface to be measured is parallel to the profilometer surface plate. If there are any foreign particles present, the surface to be measured will not be parallel to the direction of probe travel, and all readings will be inaccurate. With the probe at a safe distance above the workpiece, move the workpiece to be measured under the probe. Loosen the locking ring on the probe by turning it clockwise and lower it so it is close to the surface. Tighten the locking ring and make sure the workpiece surface is correctly positioned underneath the probe. Do not touch the probe to the surface. Next, you must set the stroke of the probe. First, turn on the probe stroke switch. This will set the probe in motion. The probe stroke switch turns on a precision linear drive mechanism that moves the probe horizontally back and forth over a surface. Now look at the tip of the probe and visually determine the endpoints of the stroke. Make sure the stroke is short enough so that it won't fall off the edge of the feature, but long enough to get a usable sample of the surface. If you need to adjust the length of the stroke, use the stroke adjustment knob located near the top of the probe mechanism. Pulling the knob out will lengthen the stroke, pushing it in will shorten the stroke. When you have determined the proper stroke, turn off the probe stroke switch. Then, using the probe height fine adjustment knob located at the top of the probe mounting assembly, touch the probe to the surface. Turn the knob counterclockwise, lowering the probe while watching the meter on the control center. When the needle jumps, stop turning and wait for the meter to return to zero. Once the meter has returned to zero, turn the fine adjustment knob counterclockwise two graduations further and once again allow the needle to return to zero. Now the purpose of this last step is to make sure that the probe will stay in contact with the surface throughout the entire stroke. Now turn on the probe stroke switch again. Notice that the probe is moving back and forth over the surface area selected. Since the range setting is 10, the bottom scale is used, and each numbered line represents one microinch. Now, check the reading on the meter. Notice that the meter fluctuates slightly as the probe moves over the surface. The proper measurement is the average reading around the point where the meter tends to dwell. This is the damping switch. When set to standard, the meter will sometimes kick at the beginning or end of a stroke. Turning the damping switch to high will damp the effects of these kicks. You should, however, always use the standard setting and read the meter while the probe is in steady motion. Kicks in the meter while the probe is at either end of its stroke should be ignored. You can see that the meter is reading right around 6 micro inches. If the finish specified for the surface is 6 micro inches or more, the feature will be acceptable. Notice that if we change the range setting to 30 and are now using the top scale on the meter, that the needle changes position drastically. But when we read the meter, our resulting finish still reads about 6 micro inches. In most cases, when measuring surface finish, it is a good idea to take finish readings at several different areas of the surface to ensure the finish is consistent. When you are finished taking a reading, turn the fine adjustment knob clockwise to raise the probe off of the surface. Switch the probe stroke switch to off and remove the workpiece. The digital profilometer is set up and used in much the same way as an analog profilometer. Once again, there are both cutoff and range selector dials, as well as a parameter select dial and a threshold bandwidth dial. The threshold bandwidth dial is used only when the parameter select is set to peak count. Peak count will count the number of peaks within a 1-inch sample length 
and the threshold bandwidth determines what size peaks are counted. You will typically never have to adjust the threshold bandwidth when measuring roughness average. Position the workpiece and probe and set the stroke the way you would with an analog profilometer. However, before you touch off the probe, you must make sure that the parameter select switch located on the control center is switched to setup. When you have made sure the parameter select switch is set to setup, touch off the probe using the procedure you learned with the analog profilometer. Touch the probe to the workpiece surface. When you see a reaction in the digital display, stop turning the fine adjustment and allow the reading to return to zero. When the reading displays zero once again, turn the fine adjustment knob two graduations counterclockwise and then allow the display to return to zero again. Now set the parameter select switch to RA to begin the measurement. Next, turn the probe stroke switch to on. The probe will begin its stroke. A few seconds later, after the probe has completed its first full stroke, you will see the RA reading in the digital display. Here you can see this surface has a roughness average of 6.4 micro inches. Notice that each stroke produces a new reading and that every reading is not exactly the same. A variation of one or two tenths of a micro inch between strokes is normal when using a digital profilometer. This reading would tell us that the surface finish of this feature is less than seven micro inches. As long as the finish called for on the part print is greater than seven micro inches, this part would be acceptable. When you are finished making your measurement, set the probe stroke switch to off. Manually raise the probe and remove the workpiece. This profilometer is called a surface analyzer. It has the ability to take more precise roughness average measurements as well as interpret other surface characteristics. This particular surface analyzer's control center is mounted to a personal computer, as you see here. The personal computer allows you to see and print out both graphical and numerical representations of the surface finish measurement. Because of the complexity of these kinds of devices, only specially trained personnel are usually authorized to operate them. Part 5. The Portable Surface Roughness Gauge A battery-operated portable surface roughness gauge is made for in-shop use by machinists. It can be moved easily and requires little setup time. This gauge is mounted to a support stand that allows the gauge to move up and down so that the probe can be touched to surfaces of varying height. The probe can also be turned 90 degrees in any direction in order to measure surfaces that ordinarily would be difficult to reach. When mounted to a support stand, all measurements are typically done on a surface plate to ensure surfaces being measured are parallel to probe travel. On the top of the gauge, you will find the controls and display. The inch metric switch determines whether measurements are displayed in micro inches or microns in the display window. The parameter selection switch located to the left of the display window selects the type of measurements to be displayed in the window. RA will display the roughness average value. Rmax will display the maximum roughness depth and RZ will display the mean roughness depth. In most cases, the setting you will use is RA. To the left of the parameter selection switch, you will find the start button. Pressing the start button turns on the gauge and performs one measurement stroke. Before making any measurements with the portable surface roughness gauge, you must check the calibration. Now in order to check the calibration, first position a reference specimen on a surface plate. Next, position the gauge so that the probe will travel in the same direction as the double arrowed line on the reference specimen. Make sure the probe is positioned far enough above the specimen to avoid a collision when positioning. When the gauge is properly positioned, loosen the coarse height adjustment knob on the support stand and lower the gauge so that it is close to, but not touching, the specimen surface. Snug the coarse adjustment knob slightly and turn the fine adjustment knob at the top of the stand counterclockwise to slowly lower the probe against the surface until the reference line on the probe is parallel to the bottom of the gauge housing. When the reference line and the bottom of the gauge housing are parallel, it means that the stylus is properly engaged to the workpiece surface and a measurement may be taken. Now that the probe is touched to the workpiece, tighten the coarse adjustment knob to lock the gauge in position. 
Lowering the probe too far will put too much pressure on the probe assembly and result in an error display when a measurement is attempted. You are now ready to take a measurement. To do this, simply press the Start button. Immediately after pressing the Start button, the display window will show a battery icon and all eights. This indicates normal operation and adequate battery power. If the display window shows only the battery icon and no numbers, the battery is weak and should be replaced. After the display appears, the probe will perform its stroke. The probe moves inward, then outward, with the end point being the same as the start point. When the stroke is finished, the RA value will appear in the display window. You must check the reading quickly because the gauge will turn itself off after only a few seconds. You may also encounter other display messages that will indicate a problem with the measurement operation. Here you see an L in the display window. This means that the measured value is too low for the gauge to read, probably because the probe is not making proper contact with the surface. An H display means that the roughness average is too high to be measured with this gauge. Here you see the display blinking after performing a measurement. This means the value has been contaminated by three or more peaks or valleys that are out of range of the probe. This usually indicates a scratch or other flaw in the surface. Reposition the part and measure a different area of the surface. If the problem still exists, it is possible that the surface finish is inadequate. You may also encounter other error codes. If an error code occurs, consult your gauge's instruction manual or notify your supervisor. This reference specimen provides a 125 microinch surface. The surface roughness gauge must be accurate to within plus or minus 4 microinches, so a reading from 121 to 129 microinches would tell us that the gauge is properly calibrated. The measurement of the specimen is 124 microinches, so this gauge is properly calibrated and ready for use. If the gauge is not in calibration, notify your supervisor. After you have determined the gauge is properly calibrated, raise the gauge and remove the reference specimen. Now let's make an actual measurement. First, check the print for the required surface finish. Here we can see that the surface we intend to measure has a required finish of 63 micro inches or less. Next, position the part for measuring. In this case, this smaller part is set on a riser block in order to give the operator more room to work. Move the support stand and the gauge near the part with the probe well above the surface to be measured. Next, loosen the locking clamp and lower the probe near the surface. Position the gauge so that the probe will stay engaged to the surface for the entire length of the stroke. Be careful not to allow the probe to travel off of an edge or into a hole or chamfer. When the gauge is positioned, snug the locking clamp slightly and use the fine adjustment knob to touch the probe to the part and bring the reference line on the probe parallel with the gauge housing. Then tighten the locking clamp to lock the gauge in position. Next, check the settings on the gauge. Make sure the inch metric switch is set to inch and that the parameter selection switch is set to RA. Now press the start button. The gauge will perform the stroke and display the RA value, in this case 10 micro inches. Referring back to the print, we can see this surface is acceptable because the RA value is less than 63 micro inches. In order to find the RA value in microns for this surface, simply move the inch metric switch to the metric position and press the start button again. After the gauge performs its stroke, you can see that the metric RA value of this surface is 45 hundredths of a micron. Look at this part. There is no lay pattern noted on the print, but if you look closely at the surface, you can see the direction of lay. Always remember to position the piece so that the probe moves across the lay pattern. If you take a measurement this way, you can see the RA value of 62 micro inches. However, if you had positioned the workpiece so that the probe would travel along the roughness pattern instead of across it, you will end up with an inaccurate RA value of 15 micro inches, much less than the actual RA value. This completes your training on measuring surface finish. See your instructor regarding your next step.